And the most important thing which we'll get also in Indian river situation is the contaminated sediments. Because the rivers, say Ganga, they go past some of the uh, towns which are highly industrialized. Think of Kanpur. It will have a lot of you know, waste from the tannery and other industries. Or if you go by the past of Holdia, it will have a lot of waste from the oil industries. And this way, and also other channels, we were talking about Damodar, you will find that a lot of mining wastes are there. So where you put that contaminated sediments, that has to be planned for before. Because it is a lot of time, the thing is that it's the dredging is our duty, duty, the other part is not that. So you put nearby the dredging area and it again comes back. So these are known things. So what we do basically, we have to do the mitigation things. First thing is that, just like as you invited me in the inaugural session in the this seminar, please, Take, make the environmental study at the beginning of your project. Study the area where, where you are going to do. It's not that every, your project has to be stopped, but we know what we are doing. Even we destroy, we again can rejuvenate some of the things. But we have to have document what we are doing. And that starts first with the informing the contractors properly. That what is the zone you are working. What is the study? What was the study available with, the, with you? Give it to the uh, contractor. Then what should be the timing of uh, dredging? That is very important. And basically in the river, there are fishing seasons and others, and rainy seasons, so it, you decide the reason. And most of the important thing is that, how much to dredge? A lot of time we over-design, and some of the over-design also helps us economically. I am also a consultant, I know. So, but you have to do the minimum dredging. So there is minimum impact. But the contractors are most of the time not informed about all these things. And the last thing is that, that they have to also be informed that these are the very particular areas of concern in that whole raising zone. So that they can take uh, specific uh, measures. And as I said that selection of dredging method, I really can't help on these things. You can do best on these things. What should be the dredging methods? And what also came in, uh, here that you have, we can do a lot of beneficial use so that the people go in favor of the uh, dredging. There's the creating of different kind of uh, shore protections and others. So this beneficial use should be a part of the environmental design. And I say the Indian challenges because you are doing in the Indian rivers. First thing, India is a densely populated country. Even our desert is a populated desert, right? So here, the rivers have very much intermingled with people's different kind of activities. And secondly, with local history. And a lot of times when we do some river, you know, cleaning and other things, we throw a lot of parts of the local history. That has to be taken into consideration. And basically when it is the river Ganga. And so what we do, you study the st river stretch where what it is, where it is with, uh, the dredging has to be done. Ecological importance of the area, the biological characteristics of the sediment, then chemical characteristics, then minimum dredging required, plan for disposal. And the other issue, most important issue, again I am saying because it's a river, it's going inside a very populated area, the livelihood issues. Already in uh, Bihar, in Bintoli, the residents are opposing dredging, Ganga dredging. Because it's in Bihar, it's called Diara area. You know, Diara is a kind of a peculiar kind of a uh, river system of Ganga, where the river expands to several kilometers during the uh, uh, rainy season, and again shrinks to several hundred meters like that during the other seasons. And their whole agriculture, fishing, everything is dependent on this specific kind of Diara system. Now when you are going to dredge it, you are thinking that I will dredge it so that the big ship or big, you know, can go. But the whole uh, actually livelihood system will collapse. So we have to dredge and also keep an eye on that thing. That is a very big challenge. And similarly, this will become also with the fishing community. Because when you uh, pour a lot of sediments here, disturb the benthic organisms, the fishing also gets very much activated, uh, very much impacted. So you have to also plan for this, all these things. And what I will say that 
we have to learn from Europe. Nothing is so, which is now, it may not sound very patriotic that for uh, Ganga and others, you are going to Europe. Because Europe is also a densely populated country. And they are doing with the rivers for a long time. They have the most engineered rivers. And you see the country like Holland, one third of their country is, you know, reclaimed land from uh, the sea. So there are also environmental issues has come up. There has been, you know, there is a London Convention on Dredging Materials. Then there is a very recent, in 2002 or 2006, there is a directive by EU, European Union on dredging. I think from the beginning, we have to make some principles and directions so that our dredging does not uh, any way compromise with the environmental and livelihood issues. And also there is a climate change issues. So I'll finish here. I'll thank you that you have listened for improving for environment for giving me some time. Thank you all again. Thank you, Dr. Ray. I love the simplicity with which you explained a very complex yet very relevant and significant issue. Even a simpleton like me understood every word. So thank you for your simple but very effective presentation. Our next speaker is Captain D.K. Mohanty. And it is my privilege to introduce him and, and introduce him as our keynote speaker for this morning. Captain D.K. Mohanty served as Director of Marine Services and whole time director at Enor Port Limited, and then went on to become the chairman and managing director of Dredging Corporation of India Limited. He now serves as vice president of commercial at Indian Metal and Ferro Alloys Limited. I have met him personally when he served at DCI in his capacity as CMD and I can still vividly recall the decisiveness and promptness and fearlessness with which he handled all issues at DCI. I personally am a great admirer of this gentleman. So it's a privilege to have you here and for me to introduce you. Thank you. <laughs> 